Hi, welcome to my shack. Today's video is about optimizing your coax that's getting into the shack. As you add more and more antenna, you can maybe you arrive at some point like I just did, where you cannot pull any new coax anymore into the shack because the pipe you install is too small or just, you know, it's just too much in there. So what I got here, what I'm going to review today is the RCS-8V from Ameritron. This is a remote switch and allowed you to have five antenna converged to one. So I have two HF antenna right now, a 10, 15 and 20 meter Yagi up the tower. And I got my 40 meter, 80 meter dipole. And I want to add another antenna, which is the Cobweb antenna that, that I did review a few weeks ago. And I want to add it permanently so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut at the tower the two HF actual HF antenna and I'm gonna use only one coax to get into the shack and I will be able to add this cold web antenna and I will still have two ports to add more HF antenna in the future that's very good you save on coax and you save on space as well so this is the job I have to do today and I have to cut all the wire, you know, to be able to do the connector and everything. So since it's summertime here in Canada, because I don't want to do, to do this in winter time, it will be easier for me to solder those PL uh, onto the coax outside. So this is the project today, but there's another thing. Since I'm optimizing my HF antenna, I will have one free coax after the process that is into the shack. Uh, freeing one of my HF antenna coax I will use it to add another VHF UHF antenna so I will be able to use my both my VHF uh, UHF radio at the same time uh, for now I need to use a switch but uh, with uh, this coax saving <laughs> I'll be able to finally add the antenna I bought in Dayton in 2013 so this is uh, very very awesome and returning to the RCS 8V, this was sent to me by Ameritron and thank you very much because this will help me do this project. I really love to do review and do project at the same time that you may have or maybe at some point you will be there as well. So it's making more relevant, you know, to uh, for, for the video. And this unit, when it comes, when you're not selecting an antenna, it is, you know, it is open. But in the manual, it show you if you want it to be ground and with the center pin when it's not used, uh, you can do modifications. What you see here is just a little jumper that you just connect. Okay, you know it, it looks like a cold solder, but it's not. Okay, it was it was eat properly and it was actually bowling, but it's a big chunk of solder, so don't worry about that. And you add this jumper, and uh, what it does, it is when you're not selecting that antenna, it's into ground. This is very important to me because it's not a floating wire outside that catching RF or whatever uh, since I use high power so I did the modification. It's very simple but uh, I think it's uh, for me anyway it's the best uh, that's what I wanted so uh, I think it should be maybe like that by default but uh, uh, anyway the other way works as well but I prefer to put my antenna to ground. Another thing uh, I have in my backyard a transformer, electrical transformer. In wintertime, when it gets very cold, I get all kinds of noise. You can see now, you, see, you can see my MFJ 1026 working with that noise and phasing it out. And I use a long wire that I install only on wintertime because it is close to the ground. And, uh, you know, in wintertime, we don't go much in the backyard. It's not like summer. And I remove it in spring. And I use my gutter <laughs> as a as a, uh, a phasing antenna it's not doesn't work very well but what I'm gonna have pretty soon is uh, MFJ 1886 with the, uh, a relay so I can when I transmit will be protected and this will be used as an RX antenna using a small rotator as well to be able to get you know the better chance to get the noise and I think this is the optimum that you can have to phase out noise and have a good receiving in a noisy environment especially in your in, in the city because I got some comments you know on QRZ people say oh all those gear uh, living in the city with the noise and everything 
maybe but you know there's always a challenge of getting rid of that noise this is part of the technical fun and I, at least i try to to see it like this and uh, i will prepare today uh, the installation to be able to uh, to uh, add that in the future as well it should be uh, maybe in a week or two uh, i'll be working on that okay so this is the box it comes with the controller that you get in the shack and uh, it's a five position switch and you have a DC connection here, 13.8 volt. I use a CAT5 to a temporary cable just to test the device. And you can see the five ports and the input is the one going into your shack to your radio or your radio accessory. It goes like this uh, into the tower so water won't get in it. So that's how it's looked inside. It comes with the manual and the warranty uh, card and it also include this little 13.8 volt power pack or you can use your DC power supply if you want when you turn it on okay I just did the check the switch you can hear the relay because it is close to you it's not outside yet and I did test all the position to make sure that the contact were okay everything was fine just before you start installing something and everything was fine that's all five ports and if you want to have it to ground normally it's open uh, when you get it but if you want to have your antenna to ground when not used there is in the diagram it shows you here's the jumper that I install okay so you just follow the diagram uh, into the manual and then you're not in onto the active antenna it is to ground so this is my outside setup before I installed the RCS-8V. So you can see my dipole and my beam on top of the tower. So you can see my conduit there with the cable and uh, all the cables going up to the tower. Also my receiving antenna that I will change very soon. And then you see the coax going of the tower. So here's my conduit under my pass yo. You can see it's not completely full, the two inch pipe, but it's getting harder and harder to pull coax into it, uh, especially those big ones. So I will remove the silicone. This is a uh, like winterized silicone, easy to remove. This is my cable for my controller. Okay. And I also pass two cable. That's why I split it in half like this to make sure. And I want, I'm going to use the second one for the rotator for the magnetic loop in the future. And I will pull that in. Uh, that's about as much as it can get in. Now I'm working on the pole to just install on my tower the RCS-8V. Okay. As you can see, as I put some caps on the antenna port that I won't use, here's the cable inside. And there is mount onto the tower. You can see it like this because with those tower x it was uh, difficult to uh, to install it on the x the uh, u-boat was too small so i just built it like this i did the loop for the lightning as recommended in the manual and you can see that i intercept my coax and it's all installed about around six feet about my height so i don't think there'll be snow over there and that won't be rain too. I always put some black electrical tape uh, onto the connector when I'm done, just to be certain that uh, there won't be any water inside of it, just in case. And you can see my conduit there. It's pretty full now, but I can add more uh, antenna in the future if I want, uh, using this uh, remote switch. There you go. It's very nice. Let me know what you think. I think it's nice. So if you look after the installation, you can see my new VHF UHF antenna for my second radio. It's over there. For those of you who have been following me on YouTube, you already know that I'm a very enthusiastic person and uh, I'm always objective. For me, the glass is always half full, not half empty. 
but sometimes I get a little bit more excited and the product, the RCVS, RCS, sorry, 8V is amazing and I'm telling you why. This product optimized my coax without changing the SWR of any of my antenna. It allowed me to install much more antenna without you know running out of space to put in wires so i did install it yesterday and i'm very very pleased i did try with the amp on on 20 meters and i was able to switch with my uh, cobweb and my yagi and i'm very 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 pleased with this product i should have done that in the beginning if i would have start today as a ham radio operator of course we cannot buy everything when you buy a new radio and everything but if you can get one and plan ahead, install this and you will have uh, many years to come of pleasure installing Instana without going through the running wires into your own. So for me, uh, it's, a, it's a big thing. I've been wanting to do that for a while, but uh, now it's done and I'm very, very pleased. I'm also very happy that I did the modification to put the antenna to ground when it's not used and uh, so just take a look actually uh, no band condition this morning but uh, as you can see switching antenna is very good you put you turn it off it goes everything to, to ground hope you like this video so if you like please do a like and please subscribe to support this channel it's always appreciated when you do so thank you very much for following me if you have any question or comment don't hesitate to contact me at info at va2pv.com thanks for watching See you very soon, 73.